What's going on guys? Corey Smith here, CoreFX, and today I wanted to fill you in on a huge tip when it comes to trading the Forex markets, and that is knowing when not to trade. So most of the time when you guys uh, are studying Forex videos, learning Forex concepts, um, watching videos, reading books, the whole nine, you hear a lot of things about how to find setups, support and resistance, trend lines, you know, technical analysis, maybe fundamental analysis, all this stuff. You hear about all the times you want to be looking to enter trades, all the times you want to be looking for this setup, that setup, whatever it is. Uh, one thing you don't often hear that I think is very important that is very missed is knowing when not to trade. Right, so there's a ton of different times when not to trade. I'm sure you've heard before, don't trade on Sundays, bad time to trade. Maybe you've heard before, big bank holidays, specifically the US, but all around the world, not to trade them. Maybe you've heard the summer months aren't good for trading. Maybe you've heard the end of the year is not good for trading. Whatever it is you may have heard. Um, basically, I want to do a quick rundown on what these times are and essentially why we don't want to be trading them as Forex traders. First and foremost, um, like I just went over right there, the most important times that we want to know when not to trade are going to be major holidays. So if we have 4th of July in the U.S., banks are all closed. Um, most likely, you don't want to be looking for setups that day. I know a lot of you might not be in the U.S. watching this and you might think that doesn't make any sense, but a lot of the trading volume, a lot of the trading activity comes out of the U.S. And when the big banks are closed, there is no big volume from the big money, institutional money. Um, a lot of those trades, whether it be them positioning properly for their reserves of foreign currencies, for different transactions, for different customers, or maybe it's their speculative trades that they make throughout the day trying to make money off of the change in price in the currencies, which is what we do as Forex traders. Believe it or not, the big banks do that on a very, very large scale to try to profit as well. So there's a lot of money moving around in the Forex markets between business transactions and uh, trades and things of that nature. When the banks are closed and that big volume isn't there to move it, there's a lack of volatility, a lack of volume moving money around, and you just don't see those strong moves that we want to be catching as traders. Um, so when, when the banks are closed for major holidays, take time off. It's usually a day, maybe a couple of days. If there's a big holiday in uh, the UK, in London, it's another powerhouse for foreign currency um, trading. That, that's another one you want to watch for their holidays and you don't typically want to be trading around them. Um, the summer months can be very slow and uh, you know lackluster in trading. There's a lot of people taking holiday, a lot of vacation time, a lot of bankers taking off work. Um, kids out of school, a lot of that kind of stuff going on. So there's a lot of slowdown in the summer months as well. Um, uh, Sundays in Forex markets specifically, the markets just open. They open over in the Asia Pacific, Asia markets, um, then in Europe and then the US. And typically Sundays aren't the best because of the same reason, lack of volume, lack of volatility. A lot of the big banks that do a lot of the movement in price um, aren't open and aren't trading. So we just don't want to be in them. And then another big one, which is the reason I'm making this video today, even though I'm covering all of them, is the end of the year, the end of December. Um, it's now the middle of December here, 2018, making this video. So I wanted to make it to kind of let people know for the rest of the year moving forward, but also this happens every year. This happens, as I said, over holidays, over the summer months, um, and you know, start the week on Sundays. Also, you know, when there's not that much fundamentally going on, there's, there's times of the year where it's still good to trade, but there's also times when it's not. Um, so, Really, I, I want to focus right now on the end of the year. So uh, one thing for sure, if you don't believe me, if you don't think these times are lack of volume, specifically the end of the year, the end of December, there's a Santa Claus rally in the stock markets leading up to Christmas. Um, but essentially, I'm talking the second half of December, right? Once we start getting into the holiday season, when there's bank holidays, people traveling, people taking off, visiting their family, all this stuff let's say December 15th to the first of the new year. Um, this is a big window that I highly suggest you guys try to avoid trading. No, don't try to avoid trading, avoid trading. This is where the discipline, the self-control comes into trading that you need to have. Don't trade the second half of the month. Trade a demo account if you need the urge of still doing it and you're still learning and you, you should continue to trade. And maybe you wanna believe for yourself that December is not a good trading month. That's notoriously for the first few years I was trading, I always traded it because you got the book. You want to trade, you want to trade. And that's what I did. And I notoriously have lost more money in December than any month I've ever traded. And that is because it's just a poor trading environment. So um, if you don't believe me, there's a tool called the Average True Range ATR. Go on the daily time frame, pull up ATR on any chart you want in the foreign currencies. Um, go back in time and look at every December. 
it, it comes up as an oscillator, right? So it's a, like basically a line graph on your chart, on the bottom of the chart or the top, wherever you have your oscillating indicator set, like an RSI type indicator. Um, and it shows you essentially the average amount of pips per day that that pair moves. Pull up the ATR, pull up a pair, go over December, and I can guarantee you you'll see a dip in the average true range. Um, that's the volatility. How many pips that pair moves, you'll see a drop through the end of the year in December. That's showing you the volume dies off, the volatility dies off. The average range of pips per day that that pair moves in December dies off. We don't want to be trading those times. We just don't. If the markets aren't moving very well, we don't want to be trading. We make money off the change in price. And the more prices move and change price, the more opportunity there is to make. That We don't want to be risking the same amount of risk in a strong volatility market to have strong rewards in a low volatility market to take forever to get to those rewards, right? So um, just all in all, trading is not good when we have no volatility, low volatility, right? So volatility is one of the keys to trading, which is why I recommend and I teach in my courses, you only trade the London Open, US Open. Those are the most volatile times of the day, the most volume being traded, that's when you wanna be trading. Unless there's a news event at a different time, then there's gonna be volume because of the event. But all in all, you wanna know when the volume's there to trade it. So if you don't believe me about the end of the year in December, Pull up your ATR, go to a chart, check out December, you'll see the dip, you'll see the drop off, it'll confirm for yourself. Or trade a demo account in December and pay attention to December's trading each year and you'll see that it is not a good time of year to be trading. Um, so aside from that, aside from the you know, actual reason behind the banks not being open and behind the volatility being low and not wanting to trade these months, there's also, I would imagine with a lot of people, including myself, personal reasons why the month of December you're not going to want to trade. There's a lot of vacation time. There's a lot of holidays. There's a lot of visiting family. There's a lot of doing things. You're not typically doing the rest of the year, right? Um, there's a number of different holidays in December that people celebrate from Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, Christmas, New Year's. Um, there's a lot of different holidays, but typically you have people taking time off because they're not going to you know, have it at the end of the year. They need to use it before it it expires and the new year starts new time off for the following year. So a lot of people taking off work, traveling. Um, you're busy. There's a lot going on. You're holiday shopping, you're visiting family, you're traveling, you're having dinners, you're having lunches, you're going to shows, you're doing all these things. This is pulling your mind and distracting you from the charts. This is distracting you from your plan, from being disciplined, from analyzing your results, from all the things that you normally do when you go into a trade. This is distracting you from that. You're busy, right? So take the time and enjoy the time with your family. Enjoy the time off. Enjoy your travel. Enjoy all of this. Don't get all stressed out trying to balance trading in this. It's a terrible trading environment and you're busy. Why? You're just forcing things you shouldn't be forcing. So you've got the personal reasons as well for why this is not a good time to trade. Now, what should you do? There is a lot you can do that doesn't involve trading. You can reflect on your year of trading. It needs to be done, has to be done. What better time to do it than the end of the year? You want to be mentally ready and prepared for the beginning of the year. January brings good trading. One of my best months of the year for trading. You want to be prepared for January trading. You don't want to start analyzing your year before when there's good trading opportunities because then you might be missing out on trading. And again, giving yourself too much to do. So take the end of the year to reflect on yourself. Look back at your trading year. What did you do wrong? What did you do right? How has your plan de developed or changed? Have you been journaling? How do your journals look? Um, you know, reset your journal, get prepared for the new year. Put that journal, keep it, start fresh with 20, 2019, have that journal to reflect on, go down and analyze all that, but, but reset, you know, read books, study, back test. Go ahead and go back in time with your strategy and test it out, tweak things, work on it. If you don't have a strategy, now's your time to work on building it. Um, you know, check out how you did each month of trading this year. Check out how you did the last week, the last month, the last quarter, the last six months, the last year. Reflect on yourself and your trading. Take this time to step back, see what you could be doing better, see what you're doing wrong, see what um, you know improvements you can make, and take the next step forward. Then you also want to get prepared for the new year. What are your goals for this year? You shouldn't have the same goals you had last year. What do you want to be doing? Um, you know, with your routine with your trading, with your targets, with uh, everything, your personal life, your, maybe you're an entrepreneur, uh, whatever it is you wanna do, you wanna have your goals set, right? So get ready for the new year, set your goals, focus on your trading goals, focus on your trading plans, your journaling, your timeframes, 
Um, you know, what books are you going to read this next year? What are your goals monthly? What, do, what are your goals for the whole year? What are your plan out your big time goals so that you can then break them down into micro goals and accomplish them throughout the year to get to your big goals, right? As you guys know, goal setting is the key to success. Every, every successful person in the world sets goals constantly. They set big goals and then they set micro goals to reach those big goals. This is your chance to do it. This is your time to do it. Figure out what you want to accomplish next year. Trading specifically is what I'm talking about here, but this could be for anything in your life, right? So just take the time to um, position yourself for success in the next year. You don't want to dwell on the past year. You want to reflect on it. You want to learn from it. You want to keep going forward. You don't want to dwell on it. And you want to open the door to the new year, the new chapter, the new you, and get prepared. All right, guys. I don't want to go too long with this video. I just wanted to do a quick little topic on um, you know, knowing when to trade and when not to. And one of the big things I cover in this video is this end of the year. Um, Every December, same thing, second half of the year, you got to know to step back, not trade. If you have the urge, like I do, have a demo account. Or, I don't like even saying to do this, but if you trade, let's say, uh, 2% of your account you're risking, drop that down to a quarter of a percentage point or something. You know, drop down, downsize the amount of risk you trade with to be trading very small. If you're trading standard lots, normally, trade 0.10 micro lot, right? Trade that. You're not going to risk anything major. You know, you're going to be risking a, a fraction, a tenth, ten percent of what you're normally risking. So if you're normally risking two percent, you're risking ten percent of that. That that's very fractional. That's something you could avoid the losses, and maybe you'll get the smack on the wrist teaching you not to trade those times. And maybe you'll learn like I did. I had to learn the hard way. I, for one, didn't have people telling me don't trade, but for two, I did read it and find it online, and you know saw people saying not to trade the December, but I was like, well, what could be bad about December? I see perfect trade setups, there's perfect trade setups. Until I started losing a lot of money every December I tried doing that, and then I realized I'm not trading December anymore. I wanna work on other things. So that's the main purpose of this video, it's just to help you guys understand. You need to know when not to trade. Trading and knowing when to trade is great. Knowing when to enter the markets is great. Knowing when you wanna be behind your computer's trading is great, that's all fine and dandy. But if you lose money by trading at the wrong times, there's no point in trading at the right times because you're just giving all the money back and more or all your gains. And it, it's just it's just an endless cycle of if you start pulling those mistakes out and those losses out, you're going to keep your profits and more of them if you already are keeping profits. So one of those things to avoid is trading at the wrong time of the year. You want to be trading the right time of year and you want to be trading the right time of day, the right time of the week, everything. So focus on eliminating the wrong times out of your trading. I promise it'll help. All right, guys, thank you very much. I appreciate it. I hope you guys enjoy this video. Leave a comment, leave a like, um, subscribe to the page if you like what you're seeing, and you'll get notified if you turn on your notifications every time I drop a new video. Um, thank you all for coming and watching this video. I really couldn't thank you enough. I appreciate the support. Throw a comment below. Love to hear from you, good or bad. Like the video if you like what you're seeing. And I'll catch you guys out there. Happy holidays, everybody. I really enjoy the support. I hope you guys have a great holiday with your family, without your family, whatever you're doing. Um, enjoy the holidays. We will have a great 2019 here. And I enjoy it. I look forward to it. I'll see you guys then.